So they're coming from 27 kilometers that way, ending up right over here, pretty much making it either the Tour de France of horse racing or the Indy 500 of horse racing. I obviously prefer Indy 500. Cincinnati girl. I'm Paula Froelich. Take a journey with me to explore the unknown and discover the unexpected. This is Abroad Abroad. The adventure starts now. It is pretty much the biggest festival in the country and probably in this part of the world. Every single person in the country is celebrating this right now. The sports they play are known as the three games of men. No rhythmic gymnastics or synchronized swimming here. These are warrior games where the 13th century participants showcase their talent while Genghis Khan was watching. He used Nadam as his very own draft to scout talent for his army. I love it because Genghis Khan used to have people do this all the time. They had archery contests so that everyone could conquer better. Then they had wrestling contests so that everyone could keep in shape. And horsemanship, obviously, because he conquered all of Asia and Europe on horseback. The opening ceremony features a colorful parade of athletes, monks, musicians, and people dressed as ancient warriors, followed by a dance performance. How can you not love a place where wrestling is a national sport? According to legend, a woman once dressed up as a man and won the whole event. So to make sure the boys didn't get whooped again, they made a new rule that everyone has to compete bare-chested. Clearly, some tough women in this part of the world. Before the competition starts, these tough wrestlers perform a ritual dance that imitates animal movements to help them prepare for the match. Women compete against men in the archery event. With arrows flying at multiple targets, this is no Robin Hood men in tights. More like Braveheart on the step. And if watching sports isn't your thing, Nadam's got much more to offer. Games, shopping, and best part, noshing on Mongolian festival food. Yes, I'm wearing probably the silliest hat in the universe, but it's an umbrella hat, which is amazing because it leaves my hands free to eat hoshu. Horseshoe is the traditional Nadam snack of fried meat goodness. It's to the festival what hot dogs are to Yankee Stadium, and it is so good. We just came from the opening ceremonies. Afterwards, we did archery and wrestling to like 20 kilometers outside of the city where they're doing the big horse racing. So they're coming from 27 kilometers that way, ending up right over here, pretty much making it either the Tour de France of horse racing or the Indy 500 of horse racing. I obviously prefer Indy 500. Cincinnati girl. None of those fancy thoroughbreds you see at the Kentucky Derby could last out here. And good luck trying to pick a winner. For anyone placing bets, Timor, our guide, said he thinks a white horse is going to win today because it's so hot and sunny. We shall see. The horses are coming from so far away, you can't even see them yet. All you see are huge clouds of dust. But the dust is actually super important historically because what Genghis Khan used to do is tie sticks and branches to his horse's tails so that armies from far away would think that his army was five times bigger. Neat trick. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my God, look how fast they're going. And as for that tip I got from Timor, well, he's a great guide, but not the best handicapper. Timor was wrong. A white horse is, in fact, not in the lead. It is, uh, it is a dark horse in the lead. Always bet on black. The winning horse receives the title of Tumni Ek, or Leaders of 10,000. While the last place horse, well, they get a song of encouragement wishing them to do better next year. On the next Abroad Abroad, I visit Mexico's secret haunted city.